I would suggest that you watch this video all the way through before you start painting. Also, you might want to pause it every now and then to get yourself caught up. I'm going to start off with just a wet wash. So I have a clean sponge brush and I'm just putting a light wash. I just dipped it in the water a little bit and go right over the painting. That way we can make a blue wash. All we're going to do is put our brush. We're going to get the water out of the brush. We're just going to dab it into the blue and just make a really nice blue wash on here. Then we're going to take that napkin and we're going to crunch it up and we're going to just dab it all over the painting. I want it to look a little bit like it's underwater since the axolotl is underwater. I probably should mention that we're going to work fast here. We don't want that blue paint to dry. Now I'm just going around and I'm wiping off the blue paints off of the axolotl because we don't want her blue. We're going to get as much as we can off of her. And you, whenever you get into the tight areas, it's okay if a little bit of blue just stays in there. You might want to wad that paper towel up and make it a little bit smaller for this area. It's always good to dry your painting in between the different coats and colors. I have a heat gun, but if you have your hair dryer, that'll work too. Don't let little kids use heat guns. They get pretty hot. Uh, also, you could just let it air dry. So the axolotl body is going to be a wash again. I had one dab of pink and then I probably took up like five dabs of water and I'm mixing up that really good. I really don't want any chunks in it. I'm going to go ahead and paint it all over her. Just like we did with that blue, if we need to, we can dab some areas out that we want to keep a different color. Do notice that the whites of her eyes, if you can get it, the paint out of there or not get any paint in there at all, that would be awesome. Don't worry too much about your brush strokes. They will all even out really nicely for you. This is a good time to tell you that go ahead and turn your painting upside down or sideways whatever's easiest for you to do the painting it's easier for left-handers differently than it is right-handers everybody has their style whatever's easiest for you so you're not contorting your body and you're able to make straighter lines Okay, go ahead and let that paint dry or dry it with your blow dryer. We're going to work on our spots and I'm going to use the back of my paintbrush. Just dip it in my paint and draw it on there or paint it on there, whatever you want to say. The trick is, is to get quite a bit of paint on there and just move the end of that brush around. You don't want to drag the brush around on the canvas you don't really want to be touching the canvas a whole lot you're just moving the paint around you can even do the heart on her head this way This is a good time to turn that canvas to make things easier for yourself. Also, don't forget, you need a lot of paint on there. You're just kind of moving paint around. Make sure you don't get your hand in that paint that's already on there, those other dots. A lot of times I'll put my pinky down where I know I'm careful. I know that there's no paint there 
and I'll balance my hand on my pinky and not move anywhere else, not let anything else touch the canvas. I mixed up a wash of the blue paint so it's nice and watery just like we've been doing and I'm going to put it on the outside part of the tail. You know the the area all around the tail that's thinner because I wanted a little bit blue color. It's mostly pink but it's got a little tint of blue because you can kind of see around that or see through that so almost so you can see the water through that thin membrane. Now I'm going to put that same blue wash on her tentacles. I don't know if those are really called tentacles or not, but that's what I'm going to call them because I don't know the proper name. I'm kind of letting a little bit of the blue pull down in the tips. Can you see that blue? It really kind of turns a purple color. I really like the way that that looks. So you can leave a little bit pulling down in the tip. Okay, get your hair dryer out and let that dry. If you have pools of that blue, make sure you don't get too close. You don't want to actually blow that into another part of the painting. You want that to stay put. We're going to mix up three different uh, greens for that seaweed. So you can see the different amounts, but really you're going to want a light one, a medium one, and a dark one. It doesn't really matter. Um, what your colors are compared to mine you make the colors that you like just dark medium and light if you want you can just do a yellow one on this painting i didn't do a yellow one but on my my male axolotl i did do a yellow one and i did them all in a wash so that was pretty cool this is all straight paint so this isn't going to be see-through and you'll have to do a couple coats of it Take a look at your seaweed. You kind of will see that some of them look like they are sitting behind others. So pinpoint your ones that are closest to you and the ones that are kind of farther away and work with those two first. The ones that look like they're closer to you are going to get that lighter green. The ones that are look like they're the farthest away from you are going to get the darker green. And then the other one's going to be that middle green. So you should kind of distribute those colors evenly, you know, just don't have one medium, but kind of plan that out before you start the painting. Now that you've planned where those colors are going to go, you can kind of go from one side back to the other side and let the ones that are touching each other, you know, dry in between so you're not working on a wet one right next to a wet one. Also, use your blow dryer anytime you need to get things dry before you start your second coat. Like I said, these are going to need two or three coats to get them completely covered. I inserted a finished picture here. That way, if you want to pause it, you can see where my different colors are at. Thank you. 
do remember to dry between the different coats. We're gonna start working on the blue part of our eyes. I have that smaller brush. This is a really tight area. If you have a really small brush at home, you can go and use that. But this brush really should be fine. I always say use a bigger brush and you really think you need to. On this one, I'm using just the tip of the edge of one side to get in there. This is another place that you could use the back of your brush, just like we did with those dots. You could use the back of your brush as well. I also want to mention, don't get too hard on yourself about having perfectly straight lines. The more you paint, the more you have practice, you'll be able to do that. But on this picture, we're going to use a black Sharpie to outline everything. That's really going to help cover up any any paint marks that you know you, you didn't do a really nice smooth line there'll be a smooth line with the black sharpies and looky there we already got the sharpies i do want to point out that everything is completely dry on this painting if you start and things are damp or wet you're going to ruin your marker right away just be really careful in these tight areas of the eyes those are going to be the the hardest part this is a place that you really need to turn your canvas as you go also be really confident in your in your strokes in your pen strokes because when you stop that's when you get jagged lines also another tip don't watch where the tip of your pen is necessarily watch where you want to end up at in your peripheral you'll be able to see where the pin's at but kind of watch where you're going where you're trying to get to when you're doing that curve rather than right where you're at try that and see if it turns out a little bit easier for you you might have noticed that i just did the pupil of her eyes with that black marker you could have done it with black paint but it's a tight area and it's so much easier to do it with that marker while you have it out. Have fun and finish outlining your painting. Let's take care of the edge of the painting. I have my sponge brush and I just kind of do a little line at the top and then I bring the paint down. You don't want a whole lot of paint on that sponge brush. Just kind of do the tip of it, make a kind of a line and then bring it down. The color that I used was one of the mixes for the seaweed. I do believe it's probably closest to that middle hue. I'm back to my smaller brush and I've got the white paint. I'm just doing some highlight areas. There's not really any rhyme or reason to where I put highlights. I like to go on the curved lines around the outer edges or around her cheeks, around her chubby little bodies and tentacles. So think about that. You also need to do the seaweed. I'm going to put a little highlight on the hearts 
and some of her little spots. I'm not sure if those spots needed highlights after I got done. I did think her little belly button had needed a highlight even though she wouldn't have a belly button. I need to finish up the edge of the painting. I got my sponge back, brush back. It's all dry and I have the black paint. I'm going to start at the right corner. See I just had a little bit of paint on there and I'm going to make one swoop down just like that and then I'm going to take the brush and kind of measure from one area to the next. I'm going to get that black on there first. I'll tuck over here, wait for me to get the paint. See I'm measuring and I'm eyeballing and then I put my next. So the paint, the where it has green paint and the where it has black paint are approximately the same distance apart. Don't get fussy with it, it's okay. When you get to that left edge, you're just going to have a tiny bit there that uh, won't have any of the black paint and it'll just have green. But turn the canvas over, start on the right corner again, and keep going all the way around. had fun painting this little axolotl with me.